makes me a dope boy. I'll work and no play makes me a dope boy. I'll work and no play makes me a dope boy. I'll work and no play makes me a dope boy. My name is Jasmine and my DJ alias is Uko. I DJ for the collective No Shade and I have my own collective that I run with Nina and a party series called Infinite Quest. My DJ name comes from an art alias that I had, um, an unidentified coloured object, which was based around kind of like this idea of a UFO and being like this unidentified coloured object and being on the fence within that. It's it's just who I, well, like this kind of character or identity that I am, that's like my mode of self-expression through that, my music is my self-expression through that, so I think one is kind of a personal kind of um, stance on my identity and isn't as overtly said, it's just more like Kulko, it's not an, like, it's not, it's an uh, anagram. Um, but through that, I kind of like using that and then the idea of music to kind of express my identity in both those ways. Infinite Quest okay. is uh, the party series that I make um, with Nina as well. And we wanted to start a party that was based around just us and our mates getting together and playing together. So every party series we have, it's a bi-monthly party series at Cake and we invite a few of our friends or DJs who we love and respect and we invite them to play. And then normally me and Nina will have a, a little like back-to-back, -back, a couple of sets and then finish the party with a little back-to-back -back after. I found myself playing gigs and being booked to play gigs, but actually my real kind of love and joy for where DJing and DJing as a craft came from was from playing with my friends and from being inspired by them. And the notion of community I felt was kind of lacking uh, within my space, my creative space. So I felt it a necessity to, plus like the kind of connection and the kind of stuff that you can create with your friends when you have that connection can be just like totally different to, you know, what you could create when you're just by yourself. And I wanted the space to be able to, you know, explore that and find friends. And it's not like a massive thing where we're trying to like, you know, make it, uh, you know, a, a massive kind of like event and stuff. We just want to play and jam and have a space where we can do that. So I think Berlin's a really good space to have these kind of parties and be able to like play it these kind of smaller events where you can kind of get a bit more experimental than the corporate side. I got into DJing through um, studying art and I was fed up with studying art and I just felt like music was um, kind of a more uh, a form of self-expression that I could relate to a bit more um, because I felt like it reached an audience in a more, um, <laughs> I'm trying to use a word that doesn't sound really art school -y. <laughs> but like kind of visceral way, like something I found, I was <laughs> visceral. <laughs> I just, the spaces, no, I mean, I'm not like trying to, art is great and I love it. But the spaces that you would exhibit and stuff, I found were kind of a bit um, could hostile. You know, I'd invite some people there and they'd be like, oh, I'm not sure if I can understand this or I can interpret this and stuff. And I felt just as a medium for me, fine art wasn't the route to go because in the club, um, when you're DJing, you can be as artistic and say whatever you want and use skills and make a political statement without the need for someone to feel like they have to intellectually digest it um and that's what really cool to me because like not even in a i mean you can get that at a live concert as well but just like when you're in the club and all inhibitions go i think it's a really special place to be able to uh, say what you want to say and make a message what i want to communicate isn't really 
it shows in not so much of like an overt way but it's more for me my self-expression comes from being able to play music from all different spaces and all different places and the historical context of all the subgenres that I play because most of the genres come from underground queer black spaces and for me the being able to play that kind of stuff with such political charge um, that kind of artwork with such political charge that comes from such a strong marginalized groups is like that's my own self-expression and then people don't even have to digest that aspect people are clubbing and their kind of love and appreciation through that is what I get from it rather than them having to understand why my what my intentions are or if there's like some kind of political message by it the act itself is the art and the political message you know you can see through like the history of in in my specific case like of clubbing how how like genres have allowed like groups to kind of develop and evolve and accept each other and find means of self-expression and to like redefine themselves um and you can see that through blackness through you know uk blackness us blackness and afro and caribbean music you know and see like the diaspora within that and so that to me is such a powerful message for like my identity and where i can place myself within these stances and the influence that this music has on me with my identity is kind of um it's the communities itself that like creates these genres and creates these messages and then we kind of digest that and we should respect that and learn from it so i think it's like this cyclical thing and yeah i think that's you know that is the most important thing i mean with music music is made for people to hear together and come together and dance together like that's the whole thing <laughs> you know so you know communities of music community, what is music without community or what's community without a bit of music there you know i think the point of no return for me because we were talking about more on how you're treated within the space and i feel like there's always going to be highs and lows within the space and the creative environment you're in that's just what happens with um commodified art forms when the art forms commodified when your identity is commodified you know you're always going to experience highs and lows and justices and injustices and i think what you can depend on the most is your community for me the point of no return is um once you have established that community you know and you're constantly like thriving creatively from that as opposed to how the industry treats me nice